Okay, so I've cleared a little space on my disc and we're going to take this little Kera DaVinci 4 radio, we're going to pull it apart and see what's inside it. Now this one's already been converted to uh, LIFE batteries, so you see I haven't got the little 8 cell holder, I've got the Hobby King 1500 milliamp LIFE battery pack and to install that I actually soldered the, uh, or cut the wires and soldered on the type of connector. They use a JST but it's, it's damn hard to get out of this little compartment here. I'll see what I can do though. No, no amount of tugging and pulling on this little uh, JST connector down here will free it up. So I'm just going to have to leave the battery connected for the time being while I get involved in removing all these little Allen keys that I mentioned last time. These are actually quite tight, these screws. So I suspect that they're just screwed into plastic pillars, as is often the case with these cheap Chinese radios. They don't use the threaded brass insert, but uh, let's just... I'll cut to the chase, I'll cut this piece out. And once you get the back off, this is what you see. It's a fairly conservative design. A lot of copper in there, actually. I'm quite surprised how much copper we've got in here. We've got a um, board down here for the switches, another board there for the other switches. Here's the LCD board. This is the main logic board. It's got a very small processor. There's obviously it's four channels. It doesn't have to do very much. And the RF is all tied up in this tin box up here. So here's the inside of the transmitter, a bit of a close-up look at the circuit board. It's got an 80 mega 168 processor, it's generally small fry by modern standards, they're not a particularly powerful processor, but it's all you need for a four channel radio like this, basic radio. And the 80 megas are quite commonly used, the 9, Turnigy 9X uses an 80 or an Atmel processor, it's all pretty common. We've got a little voltage regulator down here that um, gives us our 5 volts. Um, um, but um, disappointed to see that this is a linear regulator. There's no switch mode regulator inside this, so the full nine volts of the battery will be, well, most of the power in the battery will actually be wasted because it's not uh, being switched. It's actually being dissipated as heat, the excess voltage from the 9.6 volt battery pack. What a shame if they'd used, well, they could have got away with using a, a four cell battery in this. It's most unfortunate though. I don't know why the Chinese manufacturer is still sticking with using 9.6 volt packs in their transmitters. Seems a little bit odd to me, but there you go. Remembering that this logic here runs on 3.3 or 5 volts, and in here sometimes down as little as 2 volts in the RF section, 2.2 volts, 2.5 volts, depending on what they're using. And I think they're using the Cypress chipset in here. I can't, I'm not going to take the lid off and have a look, but I think they're using Cypress chipset, which is a DSSS chipset. So I don't expect to see a full hopping system. I expect to see a 2 or 3 hump DSSS system when we put it on the spectrum analyzer. So here we are with the Walkera Dimension 4 spectrum analysis and as you can see basically we've just got noise at the moment right down at the minus 95 decibel mark. Basically it's just noise because we've got the transmitter turned off and we're just waiting to bind things up. So I'll turn on the transmitter first of all. Let's see what happens if I turn on the transmitter without having any receiver operating. And there we go. It looks like we're getting three, three peaks of, uh, of frequency there. I'll just turn it off and we'll do a bind do a bind this time because sometimes this uh, system will give you a different output depending on whether you've bound up to the receiver or not. So turn it on, put the bind, put the receiver on, see what we get this time. Here we go, we've still got, we've got three peaks coming up there. So this as I suspected, this is a three frequency system and uh, it's DSSS, the bandwidth is about Looking at that, it's about 5 megahertz per peak, which means it's DSSS, it's quite reasonably wide. So it's a bit like DSM2, but it's got an extra channel as well. So not as good as a full-time frequency hopper, but better than DSM2. So if you've been flying at fields where DSM2 has worked without any problems, then this would work just fine as well. But if you're in a highly congested area, personally I'd want more than just a three-channel DSSS. I think I'd be looking for the, the full frequency hopping so the Walkera, despite what it says in the little instruction booklet, is not a frequency hopper. It's a DSSS system and it uses three separate channels rather than four, or rather than the two of DSM. You notice that there's actually a big, huge gap in here. Let's use two down here, one up there. Um, I assume it's pretty random that the channels are chosen at random or maybe it does an analysis of the band first. But whatever the case, I mean, that's perfectly adequate for certainly flying the little ladybird. If I was flying a jet or a large gas model, oh, I don't know that I'd be quite so keen on using 
a system with just three frequencies, but it is DSSS, so yeah, I mean, not state of the art, but certainly better than DSM2 is how I'd summarize that. So there you have it, the Walkera Dimension 4 radio. Now, it's a really cheap as beans radio. They don't cost much, especially with the little ladybird uh, quad rotor. But the, the construction inside is quite nice. It's well put together. Quite happy with the way it's been built. The RF section is all screened up with a tin cam, which is good for emissions. And um, yeah, not really much to fault. I don't, the, the sticks are you know, a bit cheap, so, but it's the cheap radio. Now, the three frequency DSSS system is okay. I mean, I don't, you'd have to have a lot of noise to really knock it out. But these days, the 2.4 band is getting quite noisy, so I really would have liked to see them have a frequency hopping system. Now, they, I think, are the, of this, the SN and the W Fly are now the only systems I know of that are not full time frequency hopping. And so, you know, obviously, the, the future is frequency hopping. It will allow you to use the entire band. And even if 90% of the band is totally clogged with noise, a full time frequency hopper will get through enough to give you some control with these. If, as you saw on the spectrum analyzer, if each end of the band was cluttered and there was a big gap in the middle, then this wasn't going to work. This wouldn't work. You'd be blocked out. So it doesn't use the whole band, so it loses points there, I'm afraid. But as I say, on a four-channel radio for a $70, $80 quad rotor, it's probably not important. However, if it's a jet or it's a large gas model or something that flies very fast, uh, then, no, nah, I probably wouldn't use a dimension radio. I'd want something a little bit more solid. But that's it. That's a quick look at the Walkera radios. I'll go back to flying my, my little ladybird now because it's just so much fun.